So in this video, we're going to apply the chain rule in the case where we have a rational function involved. So it says find the derivative for f of x equals x minus 1 over x squared plus 1 squared. And so what we want to recognize here is we do have a function composition. The outer function is the squaring function. And so that's playing the role of f of x in the chain rule. And the inner function is the rational function, x minus 1 over x squared plus 1. <clears throat> so if I rewrite this, f of x equals, we have the squaring function, and inside of the squaring function, there's a rational function, x minus 1 over x squared plus 1. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is use the chain rule. Because I have a function composition, I need to take the derivative of the outermost function first. And that's going to be the squaring function. So the, uh, so the 2, by the general power rule, the two is, 2 is going to come down into the coefficient position. And then we reduce the exponent by 1, which is going to give us uh, to the first power. And we take the derivative at the inside function. So the derivative at x minus 1 over x squared plus 1 times. Then the chain rule says times take the derivative d dx of the inside function. And the inside function is the rational function x minus 1 over x squared plus 1. And then this now is just uh, a rational function. I'm going to need to use the quotient rule to take its derivative. So I'm going to step down and continue to work on this. I have 2 times I have a 2 times, these are to the first power, so I can drop the parentheses. It's really going to be 2 times x minus 1 over the x squared plus 1 times the derivative of this ratio. So I'm going to use the quotient rule. So the derivative of the numerator, and the derivative of the numerator is 1. The derivative of x is 1. The derivative of a constant 0, I get 1 minus 0 is just 1. So the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the quotient rule says then take the numerator and multiply it by the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of the denominator is 2x because we use the general quote, uh, general power rule applied to x squared is going to be 2x and the derivative of a constant is 0 so we just get the 2x and then the quotient rule says divide everything by the square of the denominator. So x squared plus 1 all squared. And then I can start to simplify things a little bit. I have my 2 times my x minus 1 times. I have an x squared plus 1 sitting here minus parentheses. Distribute the 2x into the parentheses. So 2x times x is 2x squared minus 2x times 1 is 2x all over. And I look at these, I have the same base. So I have x squared plus 1 times x squared plus 1 squared is going to give me an x squared plus 1 cubed. Now I can distribute that minus into that parentheses and distribute, and I don't want to distribute there, I want to leave it factored form. 2 times x minus 1, there's no reason to distribute. Uh, so x squared plus 1 minus 2x squared minus minus plus 2x. And then combine like terms in this factor. So I have x squared plus 1 all cubed. And so the final step would be the derivative of f is, I have the 2 times x minus 1. I want to leave that in factored form. And then this will clean up a little bit. x squared minus 2x squared is minus x squared. And then I have uh, plus 2x sitting there. And then a plus 1 sitting there. So plus 1 all over x squared plus 1 cubed. And I glance at the this and see if it factors. It doesn't look like it's going to factor easily, so I would just leave it alone and probably stop right there. And we probably want to double check double check the work a little bit here to make sure we don't have a mistake going on. I think it looks I think it looks good. 
yeah, I think everything looks good. So I think this is this is good enough. No, no need to multiply these all out. That actually is going to make things worse. So usually when you've got stuff factored, unless you have a really good reason to multiply them out, so this x minus 1 times this trinomial sitting here, unless there's a good reason to multiply it out, you usually don't want to. Usually you want to factor things as much as you can. And, and you you know, there's a, there's a sense in which we'd even want to factor this a little bit more just to see if we could get something to cancel down here. The only thing I might do, so in my mind this is done, the only thing I might consider doing uh, maybe would be to factor the minus off the x squared and do something like this. So like a negative 2 times the x minus 1, and that would leave me an x squared minus 2x minus one sitting there and then that might you know that might make things a little bit easier to think about well can i um can i factor this at all you know so and this it still would all be over the x squared plus one cubed and then if it factors you know how's x squared minus two x minus one going to factor well you'd have to have you'd have to have an x and an x, and if it factors easily to get the minus one, you'd have to have minus and plus, and that's not going to give you the two x. So it's not going to, it will factor, it's not going to factor in a way that's easy or nice, and in a way that's going to cancel or combine with anything. So I'd just leave it like that. That might be the only other move I'd make. So I think this is good, and this maybe cleans things up a little bit.